All right, Edgar, it's been a few weeks since you officially signed with Matchroom. Now you officially have an opponent for your first fight. Jason Quigley, former title challenger at 160. Uh, how do you feel about that fight? Um, I think it's an amazing fight. You know, uh, I feel like, you know, my team made the right decision. Um, and, you know, with me, I'm a fighter at the end of the day. So whoever my team brings to the table and they put in front of me, you know, I fight. You made a lot of news early in your career, 16 fights in a row, all first round knockouts. Uh, your next four fights go to a decision. Do you feel like this is, in a way, kind of a new beginning for you? Yeah, of course, you know, obviously I'm stepping up in competition, I'm learning. I needed that experience, you know, going those 10 rounds, you know, without me going those 10 rounds or going to this uh, distance and, and getting that experience, you know, uh, I don't think I will be ready to, to fight and, and, and compete with these top oppositions and uh, at 168, you know, so, you know, the first 16 round knockouts was cool, you know, but, you know, I, I gained my, 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 my experience. Um, you know, I torn bicep in a fight, you know, got dropped, came back, you know, fought through injuries all last year, man. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to this year. How do you feel physically after going through the injuries in the last year? Um, it's been tough, man. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, last year, man, you know, it was a tough year for me. I fought my last two fights injured. And, uh, you know, no excuses, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we pulled through, we got the victories, man. But this year should be something amazing. You know, I'm back with uh, with the guy that made me, Mark Ferrite, which is uh, an ama amazing coach, man. And I'm back with him and I'm back where I need to be. What kind of difference has that relationship been? Um, I'm, I've always said it, man. Me and him is like a, a Mike Tyson, Customato, Freddie Roach, you know, Manny Pacquiao. That type of relationship we got with each other and that, that communication that, uh, you know, in that ring, man, it's very important to have that in your corner when, when you're going and stepping inside, especially in a, in a big fight, you know, uh, to have that relationship with, with, your, with your coach. It's, in boxing, we often build guys up and then tear them down again based on what we've seen lately. You've experienced a lot of that from all the first round knockouts, everybody thinking you're the next big thing. You go the distance a few times, everybody's like, maybe he's not as good as we thought he were. He was. Um, do you feel like you're now out there with something to prove once again? Oh, of course, you know, to, to, to end my career, I'm always have a chip on my shoulder, no matter what, you know. I feel like I'm that type of guy that, uh, you know, if I step in a room, I'm gonna have 50 people that love me and 50 people that hate me, you know, but as long as they watching, as long as they, they buying them pay-per-views, you know, and, and uh, tuning in, uh, that's all that matters. You know, we've heard Eddie Hearn, your new promoter, say he wants to put you on a pathway to face Canelo Alvarez at some point next year. Um, how how do you feel about that? Do you feel like that's the, the path that you should be taking? Oh, of course, you know, if it's, if it's not that, then why should I be boxing? Uh, all the guys at 160 want a shot at that, want to crack at him. Um, but me, I have a different perspective, uh, perspective, you know, it's not about the money. It's, uh, for me, it's just about legacy, you know, and getting to that, to that level and, and winning and, you know, possibly becoming the, the first undisputed Puerto Rican, you know, male, you know, because obviously my sister did it, uh, Amanda Serrano, but male figure out of Puerto Rico, man, that's legendary. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Canelo is always about his future opponent showing him something, earning that opportunity to to get a fight with him, whether it's through getting belts or through big performances. Do you feel like that's what this year is going to be for, for you kind of earning that opportunity, showing what you've got at 168? Oh, most definitely. Uh, you know, in my first opposition is Jason Quigley. You know, before anything, I don't want to focus on the Canelo fight or, who, you know, you know, the few, it's, it's, it's good to focus on that. But right now, you know, I got to focus on June. Um, I got a year layoff, you know, so I'm just looking forward to just really putting on, on a, a, a spectacular performance um, and just blowing the roof off the Hulu theater, man. Edgar Berlanga, good to have you back, man. Thank you so much. And uh, shout out to all my fans. You know, I know it's been a long time, a long wait, but, uh, you know, we back June and I'm happy. Introducing the new DAZN Boxing Show podcast. No matter the time or the place, getting your boxing content has become easier than ever. Tune in as we give you exclusive insights, predictions, fight night recaps, and more alongside the biggest names in the game. All for free. Available globally every Thursday across all audio streaming platforms and with new episodes dropping weekly to give you the latest news. Just type in the DAZN Boxing Show podcast, listen in, and enjoy.